see you online. Um, not here. Hi, Hello. thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our first uh, Microsoft Teams fast learning crash course. Uh, we're going to keep it uh, 20 minutes. Uh, we're going to keep some question time at the end. So if you've got any questions, feel free to type them in the chat box. Um, this is really going to be a demo and a bit of an experience share for how we've been using Teams at Solid, how our clients are using Teams and really to uh, kickstart uh, your journey into Teams. So uh, I'm going to start off by sharing my screen. And uh, actually, while researching for this demo, I was looking at my My Analytics. For those who aren't uh, familiar, My Analytics is uh, a pro it's part of Office 365 and kind of gives you a sense of how you're spending your time in your team, how you're spending your time um, collaborating and working uh, at, at the office. And um, maybe for those who don't know, I'm Daniel, I'm the co-founder of Solid. I also look after the client success team, new business development and procurement, also co-founder. So I like to keep my finger on the pulse. So I get a lot of email. And when I was researching this, uh, I found that I sent 555 mails uh, this month. I read 3,911, I received far more than that and I chatted or had calls of 314. So I actually looked deeper into it. I read between 188 and 245 mails a day, which is incredible. And I, I really feel like the problems that I've identified with email are, number one, there's just too much. Uh, I think many people feel the same way. Uh, number two, the way that we've created this culture of email is very much always throwing the ball back in the other person's court. So I find it doing it myself. I'm quite a lazy email writer. And I think that if everyone actually spent a little bit more time thinking about the objective of the email and what they're trying to get out of it, uh, there would probably be a lot less email, but unfortunately there's not. And then finally, um, when decisions do need to get made because the email is because the information is scattered over weeks, it's very difficult to make that decision. And you find yourself getting and having to schedule a meeting and trying to find availability rather than making a quick decision with all having all the relevant information in front of you. And then one other thing I've noticed is, I mean, and I see it in my own email stats, is that while I may be included as a CC or a BCC or as a two, if there's not a requirement for me to respond, I hardly even read the mail. So it's very difficult to keep track of what goes on. So as you can see now, I've shared my screen. I'm going to try to show you a little bit about how I use uh, Microsoft Teams to keep on top of the conversations within Solid System. So as you can see at the top left over here, I've got activity. And activity is really the things that are relevant to my teams, the things that I'm following, and the messages that are going on around the team um, that are relevant to me. So it's actually quite nice at night uh, to go through your activity. It's a good way to catch up on exactly the conversations. And again, you're having the full conversation available to you. So you're not scrolling between emails, 200 today, 200 yesterday, etc. Then I've got a chat, uh, a chat section over here. This is really about, um, this is really about uh, uh, instant messaging. So it's being able to see live uh, who's available within your business. So it knows this information from the, it knows this information from your calendar. So we can see that Lukman's in a meeting, can see Abraham's available, um, Bussy's away, etc., etc. So it's real live. Um, and then finally, we get to, uh, and finally we get to the team section, which is the heart of Microsoft Teams. So for those who don't know, Microsoft Teams is really the hub of everything Office 365. It brings together conversations, it brings together meetings, it brings together email, files, and many, many other things too, and I'll show you a few of those things today. Um, but if you look at the teams I've brought, we've got the following teams, uh, and I'm going to focus on the first two, which is our full team, and we've got members within those teams. Everybody in Solid is a member of that team, and then we've got the operations team, and everybody in the operations team is a member of that team. And you'll notice these little things underneath them, and these are called channels. And channels are groups of conversations and different, we, we can configure them differently and we do, there's no real rule, but the concept is that you are creating channels around a particular topic and everybody within that team has visibility of, of what goes on in that channel. There are private channels, but one of the big things about Teams is making things open and creating and actually removing the, 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 
the barrier to share information. So in our business, everyone can pretty much see every team, at least every channel within team within our full team and operations. Um, okay, as you can see, I'm, I've, I've actually uh, clicked on our culture channel. This is where everything culture happens. So we've got a very strong culture at Solid, and you can see a message that went out today. This was uh, a list of the five out of five scores um, of our surveys for the past week. And then you'll notice underneath it, a conversation starts to happen. Two people loved it, three people liked it. Um, I, I commented that this this morning, obviously this is conversational type engagements um, and it creates a conversation around the, the topic all in one place. If I move to the top of, uh, let's just catch up here. If I move to the top, you'll see this bar over here. Here's your files. So these are the files that are stored in SharePoint. And if I look at SharePoint on my local machine, which is synchronized to my local machine, I will see those exact files, but here they exist over here. So it really is um, a one stop shop for all your data, including your files. And what I haven't really spoken about is that the experience that I'm showing you today is, you know, and showing you on here is identical on your mobile phone. So if I go to the team, I go to the files tab, I'll see the files exactly as I do um, on my uh, mobile device, Windows, Mac, or even uh, in a web browser. So what I want to show you next is around co-authoring. So I noticed this, uh, this, was, this is our client success team, um, again, visible to everyone. And Malika actually asked me here, um, she added a file, it was our onboarding guide and earlier, please take a look at the TMS onboarding document. Let me know if I need anything to add. So right from within Teams, I can click on that onboarding document, which is also pinned to the top, you'll notice here. Uh, it's pinned to the top of the channel and it will open up Microsoft Word natively. Um, so what's quite interesting over here is you'll see that if I click this button over here on the conversation, you're actually having a conversation around a particular document. What I'm also noticing is that uh, live, you can see Malika is actually on the document, but she's also inactive on the document. So I can actually just send her a message. Hi, at Malika. Sorry, still have not gotten to look at this properly. And I'll send that to her. And that wherever she is, it will pop up if it's on a mobile device or if it's on a computer. And uh, generally at Solid Systems, what we do is when we get messages, when we acknowledge them, we don't type acknowledge, but we actually just do a tick over there like that. So oh, there we go, she's done it over there. So she likes the reaction, which means she's read the message. Um, another way you can co-author within the Teams environment is simply by just going to your Files tab, creating the file that you want to start working on. So let's go and create a new Word document and we'll call it co-author and we'll create that document, which is obviously automatically synchronized to SharePoint and all your devices that are linked. Um, and I mean, within Solid Systems, we do this a lot, especially but a lot of the time with video, and I'm going to show you how that works, but I can just click on the start a conversation and say, hey, Malika, let's see if she's online. Well, I know she's online because I told her to be, so I'm sure she's there. Hey, are you there? Um, and then she can open it. It will pop up on her side. She'll open it in anything, either on Word on the, on the workstation or in the browser. But what we actually do at Solid is we immediately click the meet. So we have this meeting. It doesn't show my camera over here at the moment, but we add a subject and we hit meet now. And then what happens is it starts a full on uh, video chat with each other and we can easily um, and we can easily have a discussion around exactly what we're talking about. And what's really cool as well is that we can record the meeting, which gets recorded automatically um, to something called stream, which is like kind of YouTube for business. So there we go. It actually says, hey, Daniel, I'm here and I can easily close that. Thank you very much, uh, Malika. And I can close that document over there and you'll notice that the document was over here and it shows me who was uh, who was lost. Uh, when it was last created. A lot of the questions we get initially is, yeah, but if you're all working on the same document, how do you track changes? And how do you keep on top and make sure that people aren't overriding good work? And so I think it's quite, uh, oh, here we go, it popped up and said, why you're away, new changes were made by Malika. But when having all your data on SharePoint, what you're actually, you're, you're, you've got built in version control. So if I click on file here and I look under info and I click on version control, You'll notice this version, it tells me I just opened it and it will actually normally show me a lot more of the versions and you can go back 
Um, you can see over here, you can save a copy or you can just go back to an older copy by selecting it on the right hand side. So version control completely built into the system um, and uh, you don't have to worry about data storage or backups or anything like that. Cool, so that's co-authoring. Now, I promised to share a tip on how not to make a fool out of yourself. So this is this is quite critical. I mean, most of my day I sit in Johannesburg and I, um, I'm working on Teams and I'm working on video. And so I've learned two tips that I want to share with you today. And I took a screenshot of one of them, uh, which I saved under my channel and under my files. Um, so this is firstly taking a while to load. It's weird. Let's do it again. Uh, go with a watch here. This is uh, an image of my desktop. This is Cordell. And what you'll notice at the bottom here is I was just about to share. So the share button is this middle one. If, you, if you're using Teams, you'll figure it out quite quickly because it's important to know. Um, I, I, I click the share button and at the bottom, it comes up with desktop and Windows. So this computer, I'm sitting in Cape Town at the moment, this computer uh, has only two monitors, so it shows sc screen one and screen two. In Johannesburg, I've got three, so it's got three monitors and, so, and usually a lot more windows open. And I make this mistake even till today, and I feel like such an idiot for doing it, and sometimes it gets me in a little bit of trouble, a bit unprofessional, but not knowing the difference between a window and desktop is a problem. A window only shares the window that you're working on, which is great for confidentiality, but generally what we're doing is we're switching between windows all the time. And when we're doing that, uh, we, the other person can't see the switch. And then you keep talking about this new window that you're looking at, but they're not seeing that window. And it kind of, it really actually, you do that two or three times, wastes a lot of time. So definitely uh, that's one trick. Also watch out for the desktop. So you've got to be really conscious saying, what am I wanting to share? I always look intensely at the picture, knowing what I want to share and, uh, and, then, and then share it. Finally, final tip before we wrap up, or we'll at least ask some questions. I'll see if there are any questions to be asked. So if you do have any, please feel free to put them in the box, um, in the chat box. But the um, the final tip is this mute button. So to be honest, if, if you're if you're involved or if you are a you're not directly involved in the conversation, or if there's background noise, you often uh, you often feel. Um, like you need to mute yourself. I think it's a good idea because it, it creates a more silent, uh, better experience. So you mute yourself by clicking this button over here. But the problem is when you are not conscious about the fact that you're muted or you forgot that you're muted, you, um, someone asks you a question, catches you off guard, you start talking, but you're actually still muted. So it again creates this delay in the conversation because they eventually like, Daniel, are you there? Are you there? And then it takes a bit of time to get back on track. So definitely really being aware of being of, of your mute situation and making sure that you are ready to unmute. Uh, at Solid Systems, we become very good at it because it literally uh, actually kills a lot of the time. So let's see what, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen over here and see if we've got any questions. Give me one moment. Great, so the questions we have are, so from Dave, how much does it cost? So Microsoft Teams, how much does it cost? For most of the clients that we see, it's free. It's free and included in business essentials licensing and free and included in business premium licensing and free and included in business licensing. It's also included in Enterprise 1, 2, and 3. So really the only thing that Teams is not included in is your email only plans, such as Microsoft Exchange Plan, um, Exchange plan 1 or Exchange Plan 2 but the majority of uh, Office 365 plans Teams is included in. I mean, the numbers are staggering. I don't have them off by heart, but the product's only been around for two, three years, and there's something like 20, 25 million uh, users already, and it's growing rapidly. Uh, another question is from uh, Cordell. Is it only Word and Excel that can be integrated into Microsoft Teams, or, or are there any other applications? I think that's a great um, question. Let me uh, share my screen once again. Oh, we've got Cordell there. And uh, so I think I showed you this, this tabs at the top. So if I click the plus tab over here, you'll notice these are the things that you are, can be integrated in as a tab. The truth is they can be integrated in different ways as well. But so everything from Excel um, or a form, a form is very interesting. You can 
actually bring, you can actually create a form that can be filled out on a mobile device and then, you know, data stored in an Excel file or somewhere else. So forms, OneNote, so all the Microsoft products, which are the usual subjects, so suspects, you'll see stream over there. That's the recording capability. So you can drop a, we've got a channel just for uh, technical training, which all the videos, but then more importantly, check out all these other apps. Uh, many people are, are familiar with things like Form Machine or Kudo or uh, um, there, there are many, many different integrations. So definitely not just Word, Excel, not just Microsoft products, um, a lot more can be put in here too. So uh, that is what I've got planned for you today. If there's any final questions, let me take a quick squiz. Take a look. Are you able to sync your calendar with Teams? Uh, absolutely. I'll show you that quickly too. So your maybe I didn't actually go through the last two. Um, the last two. So I went to activity, chats, uh, Teams, and there's calendar. So your calendar is automatically synchronized. And what you'll notice, uh, probably, let's take a look. Yeah, my calendar is completely synchronized. So from here, I mean, either in Outlook or within Teams, you can schedule a new meeting and it automatically becomes a team meeting. And then when you try and join it, so this is our meeting over here. If I click on that, I can, it brings the join link in and uh, someone just clicks that link and they join the meeting. So the calendar is completely synchronized. And so is telephone calls. So at Solid Systems, we've actually got a, a uh, calling function so we can actually not only call uh, normal people on teams some of them you can see over here but we can also make calls to external telecom numbers uh, so that is available and then finally the file section which uh, i kind of showed you guys a little bit a bit from the tab view but we can link it to dropbox you can link it to sharepoint you can link it to all over and then these are the additional apps that you can add so uh, yeah that's uh, that's it i really want to keep it to 20 minutes looks like we're out of time um, if you do have any other questions or you want to have a chat about it, um, you really, if you're really using Office 365, you're pretty much one step away from uh, changing the way that your business works. So we call it reculturing. So really changing the tools that help uh, create a more modern workplace for your people. Um, at Solid Systems, we've actually got a, a remote working policy, so you're welcome to work at home. Uh, and because in Teams, you've really got access to everything. So whenever you're ready to want to take that step, you're welcome. I'll leave my email. I'll send you an email um, after the session and get in contact and uh, we can see if we can help. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, yeah, I'll be available for anyone who has uh, any questions and wants to have a, a conversation.